I know exactly how you feel just reading the title of this video. You're probably thinking the same thing I was thinking when I was in your position. Still living with mom, still living with dad, feeling like I'm grown. I shouldn't have to live under anyone else's rules. I get it. I've been in those shoes before and there is absolutely no one more stubborn than me and there's absolutely no one who wanted to move out of their parents' house more than I did. Because I've got to be in control. I've got to be in charge. And if that's not happening, I'm not happy. So this video is going to be a little different than you're probably expecting because I've already went over the benefits of moving out at 18 and why it's so important for your confidence, respect, and how you can get further in life and reach your full potential faster by moving out. I covered all that good stuff and about 20,000 of you really liked it. But there's times where it's a straight up bad idea to move out, especially at 18. And this channel is all about self-improvement, motivation, and personal finance. So I'd be doing you a disservice if I wasn't keeping it straight up with you on this. Like, why would I motivate you to move out without telling you what to look out for or how to do it the right way? I can't be setting you up for failure like that. That's not my style. So I'm going to tell you when it's a bad idea to move out at 18 and why so you don't fall flat on your face at the most important time of your life. OK, then I'm going to do more than that. I'm going to show you how to improve these things so you can move out as quickly as possible the right way. So the first thing is this. It's a bad idea to move out if you're basing it solely on your age. How many times have you or friends said, OK, I'm 18, I'm moving out, mom, dad, you can kick rocks, I'm living on my own terms, I'm doing whatever I want to do. Hopefully y'all don't be saying that last part. In my parents' household, you be done got something thrown at you talking like that. But anyways, what you should base your ability to move out on should be your money, not your age, your money. Let me break this down for you in the purest, rawest form I can. Most teenagers aren't responsible with money. As a matter of fact, most teenagers' parents aren't responsible with money. Then they go teach their kids how to handle money. So chances are age is gonna come before the money does. And if you are responsible with money and you have saved up enough money to move out, which I'm about to go over in just a second, and just keep stacking up your money so you'll be that much more ahead in the future. So how much money do you need to move out? If I'm being real with you, you're going to need to have whatever your rent is times four in your savings account. And you're going to need one month of rent plus $1,500 in your checking account. To be completely honest though, if I were you, I wouldn't be moving out until I knew for a fact I had at least $25,000 in my savings account because stuff does happen. And I know that sounds like a lot, but that's what they don't teach you in school. So I'm going to explain exactly why you need that much. For one, you're definitely going to need that first full month of rent because when you move in, they're going to want that at the door. Ain't going to be no, hey, how you doing? What's up? Nothing. It's going to be, where is the money? Depending on the part of the month that you move in, your rent might actually be prorated a few hundred dollars, but don't let that fool you because rent's still going to be due in full that next month, probably on the first. On top of that, you'll probably have to pay a security deposit, a move-in fee, and an application fee before you can even move in, and that'll easily run you an extra $600, maybe more. Even after all that, you'll still have $800 to $1,000 left over in your checking account to do what you need to do without even having to touch your savings, which, by the way, would have four months of rent in it. Or if you're really on top of it, you'll have $25,000 or more in your savings account. And if you're wondering why I think you need to have at least four months of rent in your savings account, I'm going to give you a few reasons right now. For one, if you fall on hard times for whatever reason, whether your job lays you off, lets you go, or you just quit without any other options and there's no income coming in for you, it's going to be very hard for you to up and leave an apartment complex without having at least four months of rent in your savings account. And here's why. In order to do that, you're going to need to break your lease and that'll cost you at least two months of rent plus a leaving early fee. Like maybe you just quit your job or lost your job, right? But you don't want to move back to your parents' house. At least this money in your savings account is going to give you a buffer. With the extra money that you have saved in your savings account, what that's going to do is it's going to buy you some time. Now I say four months minimum, but if you have more like of the $25,000, that's going to buy you way more time. So the point is you have time to get back on your feet, so to speak. You get time to line something up, make more money without having to rely on whatever job it was that you lost or that you quit from. You get what I'm saying? And this actually happens a lot more than it's talked about. In my opinion, this is not talked about nearly enough, but young people quit their job just cold turkey one day out of nowhere all the freaking time. They also get fired from their job out of nowhere all the time. And a lot of times there's not anything else lined up. And typically they're living paycheck to paycheck and they have to move right back in with their parents and they're in debt because they have all these fees from their apartment complex. And while I do think it's smarter to just break your lease and then move back in with your parents, 
I think that could be very discouraging at the same time. And if you're a prideful person who feels like you can actually prove something to your parents and that you actually need to prove it to your parents, that you can make it on your own despite losing a job. And honestly, that was my mindset when I was at age two. So I'm not knocking it at all. I'm just giving you two different scenarios that you can work with. And plus, there's also that sheer embarrassment of going back and that shame and then everybody knows about it. I think, you know, whichever one you want to go with, go with it but you have to own it. Because the way I've always thought about it was this. I didn't just move out of my parents' house so I could move right back in with them. I ain't going. So I started this video out by explaining the most harsh, brutal reality that could possibly happen. Now I'm gonna take a step back and tell you something you probably haven't thought of. It's a bad idea to move out at 18 if you don't have reliable transportation. You don't necessarily need to have a car because there's plenty of areas with transportation systems which are affordable and reliable. But if your area doesn't have that and you're not able to get to where you need to go on time, like work, for example, it's going to backfire on you and you're going to be looking sick. So before you decide to be all grown and move out of your parents' house, make sure you got some reliable transportation. And I'm not talking about your roommate either. You don't know if their car is going to break down, get repossessed, total. You don't know. And of course, there's a chance that they just wake up one day and decide they don't want to take you anywhere. That automatically puts you in a position where you're not in control. And the whole point of moving out is to be in control. So let this be a lesson to you. Never move out with the intentions of having all of the control and freedom if you don't already have the control and freedom. Like, think about it. If you have to ask somebody, hey, can you take me to Walmart? Can you take me to work? Can you drop me off at the mall? You have no control or freedom. The driver does because they get to say yes or no. Now, imagine that's your parents taking you to all these places that you have to ask. Can I go here? Can I go there? Can you drop me off here? I'm sure they do it for you without any hesitation. I'm sure they would do it because they love you. But what kind of message is that sending to them? I'm independent and I don't need you anymore. So I'm out. You ain't going to see me no more. Wait, wait a minute. Can you, uh... Can you drop me off at McDonald's real quick? Can you, uh, can you drop me off at the doctor's office? Not a good look, bro. That's why in my last video I said, like, if your parents still know that you're relying on them for something, whether that's living or transportation or whatever the case is, they're not going to respect you as an adult. Like, sure, they'll love you, but they're not going to respect you as a man or as a woman. And even though I say you don't necessarily need your own car, I do think that's the best bet so you're not relying on other people. Because let me tell you something, calling Uber every single day gets expensive. And having public transportation, you have to time it just right all the time. All in all, you're going to have to put the work in to make sure that you have reliable transportation. Because if you don't, it's definitely going to be a bad idea for you to move out right now. And this is really important, so you're definitely going to want to hear what I have to say about this. It's a bad idea to move out if you lack discipline. All those vague rumors you hear about the real world are actually true. It is very hard, and you will have to adapt, or you'll be lost forever. No one's going to remind you about your appointments. Nobody's going to wake you up every time you hit snooze on your alarm clock every morning. Nobody's going to have the money to pay your rent every time you fall short because you decided to go out every weekend and buy yourself some Nikes. Because let me tell you something, if you don't pay your light bill, the lights are going to be off. You've got to have priorities and that requires discipline. So if you find yourself needing to constantly be reminded of what you need to do, if you can't wake up and show up to work early or show up to your doctor's appointments on time, if you can't go to sleep and wake up at a certain time every day, then moving out is going to be a very rude awakening for you. So I recommend that you at least get your stuff together before moving out. And frankly, if you're over the age of 16, these things should be in order anyways. I'm just saying this just in case you lack in the responsibility department. Now, for those of you who want to move far away from your parents, whether that's a couple hours away or a couple days away, the biggest mistake you can make is not looking at the cost of living in the area that you want to move to. Different city might mean different gas prices, different prices when it comes to groceries. The rent might be more expensive, so you got to think about that. Especially if you move out of state, they could be a completely different world than you're used to. So you've got to be prepared by knowing the cost of living. If the cost of living is lower in another state than you're living in right now, then good. That's an opportunity for you to save and be responsible with your money and get ahead. That's an opportunity for you to keep low overhead, low bills, and maintain a debt-free lifestyle, which automatically puts you ahead of 95% of those who are between the ages of 18 and 30. And if you see that a certain city or state is way too expensive for you, you can actually take a step back and look at what decision would better fit your pockets. You hear how everyone says they want to go to New York, they want to go to California, but I guarantee you they don't know the cost of living over there. 
look, that quick Google search, oh, $3,000 for a one bedroom. Let me take a step back and stay where I'm at because uh, I can't be doing that. Mm -mm, out there looking sick. Which leads me to my next point. Moving out at 18 is a bad idea if you don't understand how to manage your money. Like sure, it's a lot easier to save your money when you still live with your parents, but once you're on your own, you actually need to understand budgeting, how to budget, how much money is going in and out of your bank account every single month. And you'll definitely need to understand that your yearly salary isn't your actual yearly salary. A lot of people who make 50 grand a year go around saying, yeah, I make 50 grand a year. No, you don't, because once the taxes get cut off of that, it's more close to like, I don't know, 37,500 a year. You get what I'm saying? Also, if you're the type to go crazy with the credit card and then look all surprised when you're thousands of dollars in debt, actually take the time to look these things up and understand how to use a credit card properly, how to build credit, while also managing the amount of money you have on the credit card at all times so you don't end up like 90% of America in consumer credit card debt. A lot of you want to move out of your parents' house at the age of 18 specifically. Like, it is a very highly searched YouTube topic, but I just want to let you know, some of you are going to reach that goal, while others, it's going to take a few more years than you expected, and there's nothing wrong with that. But either way, you will get there, so don't let your age rush you into doing something without thinking it all the way through. As long as you follow my advice in this video, you're gonna be able to move out the right way without having to worry about much of anything. And I hope you got something out of this video because I definitely enjoyed making it. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.